Yo, yo, it's ODB. This is OLP, Mini Trucking Magazine, issue 97. Definitely a lot of stuff to talk about. We basically kick off a new millennium, the year 2K. Lance mentions in his write-up, you have four key vehicles prominent. So you have the orange, orange-ish Ford Ranger. You have the Nissan Hardbody with uh, topper and graphics, the famous Chevy S10 with graphics that later was shot uh, and ran in uh, street trucks. And then you have the Sport Compact right there. This was shot at Garden State Nationals. People have chimed in to reinforce that in the past. I always assumed like Nopi, but that was great that, uh, again, this is kind of a group effort. Toby Jordan's Nissan Hardbody and Donnie Bauer's Honda Accord, both graphics done by Charles the Kid Armstrong. Now, Donnie passed away, per Charles' comment, um, last May. He mentioned that. And his dad still has the Accord and Donnie's Civic. Um, RIP Donnie Bowers, I would throw that out there. Robbie Odom got the feature in this issue with this Ford Ranger. So we saw this at Showfest 2000. I may have saw it after that as well, but I recall that. Um, that was pretty cool. It was called The Freshman. That's a 94 Ranger. Uh, Lance and Mike uh, shoot that feature. So we'll talk more about that in a minute. Uh, this was the third cover truck to have Nietzsche wheels. Um, so issue 88 was the Master Image Customs Blazer. And then you had issue 91, the Buley's Body Works, uh, Donnie Babb. So those were the two. Now that's uh, this is the third out of six. So... When you look at this cover, I know you could kind of spin it and go, well, there's a Ford, there's an S10, there's a Nissan. Really, I kind of gave the, the cover credit to this truck because it's the most prominent, plus it's featured in this issue. So let me know if you guys agree with that. But that's the way it goes down. That's the way it goes down with this one. Again, a little bit of an in-depth inter or in-depth overview of that uh that cover. So I hope you guys, you know, just rock with me the rest of the way. You can see not a lot of features in it. It does have the Bloody Butcher. So Tim Williams, we recently had him on the podcast thanks to the big homie, Daryl Poe up in WV, holding it down. DP in WV, imagine that. You can see here, I just always assumed that it was Nopi for some reason seeing that little wall there. Um, but again, I that was just a guess. But this was a cool kind of... Um, Further back photo, and I always love this because obviously you get everyone together, you know, take some some various photos. You can see there the lower level on the back of the Nissan Hardbody. Of course, that was a big club in that region. Of course, Charles Armstrong was, you know, tied in with all those guys. But uh, they said, what better way to celebrate the new millennium than by spotlighting a few countless mini truck club members um, that have helped our sport exceed expectations. Of course, mini truck and magazine going into the 11th year. So started in 98 or excuse me, 88, now going into 2000. So that's what we've got there. The inky wheel ad on the left, a little bit of cartoon looking characters. So what you have here, we haven't checked in in a while. You can see here, editorial director, Kevin Wilson, editor Lance, and some of the names that we've grown to see for years and years uh, through this publication. Uh, you'll start to see a lot of stuff with, uh, like I mentioned recently, with fast bags and air solenoids. I mean, that stuff really starts taking off late 90s, early 2000s. The editorial features, of course, Lance, and it's um, broken out too, as well as with Mike. They talk about club stuff, and we obviously saw the little nod there for the table in the table of contents, uh, talking about um, you know the importance of all the different clubs that make up this this scene of ours. This was Harley Alcorn, Lakewood Cali, really badass. Toyota, you can see there, the Nietzsche wheels. Super clean truck, awesome color, nothing overly done, definitely low. My buddy Matt Torgerson, Matt watches, so thanks Matt. He had a green Toyota, that was always just a, just a badass bitchin' mini. Uh, my friend John, his dad had one of those trucks and I got a, I, it's in a background of one of my old photos. And sometimes I go, man, I wish I could have bought that truck, man. His was like real basic and it was badass. So here we haven't seen this in a long time. A couple things going on here. Number one, 
if you'll remember, if you've watched a lot of these in the early issues, you had to turn the 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 publication um, to be able to see. So obviously you got the different um, layout. It's a two page feature, but this one, if you look, was Colin Woody Wood, and he is all the way from Scotport, England, reddish Scotport, and um, you can see right hand drive here. This is a European spec Nissan, so it's like, of course, um, now with your phone, you can just flip an image so easy, just one touch, but uh, obviously they were kind of reinforced, hey, we're not playing around. It had a, a different motor here in this thing, which they took about in the feature of V6, which was crazy, and then the side swing tailgate, the different bed, the stuff that we didn't have here, but pretty cool. I've said in the past, and we'll eventually look at some of those, um, we'll, we'll get to some of them where Courtney would swap out the features with that Daytona magazine, I believe it was called, but this is badass. I'm going to post this in social media. Uh, also, you know, again, different version of a truck, right-hand drive, and then front end, you know, maybe not what we would have necessarily done here, but I mean, think about this. This was 20 years ago, so uh, 22, 23 years ago, damn, 23 years ago this month. So, you know, that thing was probably built mid to late 90s and uh, a lot of mods to it. So this uh, stuck out to me. Uh, I did flip through just a couple of pages before I started here. MIC, Master Image Customs. Um, they talk about the um, first is the 2000 Ombre. And it, and it mentions where Genro had um, landed back or landed there working at the shop. So, um, you know, they were given a, a shout out to... Um, to Gendro jumping on board there, which was kind of cool. Again, we had Gendro on. If you haven't listened to the podcast, I mean, that's that's the lion's share of what we do. We wouldn't be doing, I wouldn't be doing these flip throughs if it wasn't for the actual podcast. I mean, the podcast is really the, the flagship product we offer. If you do want to buy merch, a lot of you guys have been out there uh, scooping stuff up ahead of Lone Star Throwdown. Please do so. Our lifestylepodcast.com, just how it sounds. And, uh, there's some cool stuff out there. There are still some hoodies and most of the stuff, if you go on the left side, you can break it down by shirts, banners, things like that. Mini trucking on the cheap. So Mike Self goes to the dismantlers and uh, these were always kind of a cool uh, shop tour that I always liked uh, because it showed some pretty cool stuff. California mini truck dismantlers. Those guys have been around a long time. My understanding is they're still in business. And you think of a junkyard for mini trucks. H have any of you guys been there? Do you guys remember? Let me know which what you guys know. And just check that out, dude. That's something Hank would drive from, from Hammered Weekend Wear. I bet he's got one. Uh, here is pretty neat. It shows the flex window. I got to give a shout out to our, our homie Craig Braid up in the Pacific Northwest. He went on a mission, I mentioned on the podcast in the past, to pick up one of these for a friend of ours. And uh, he drove an hour and a half, two hours each way to get it. Pretty damn rare, but uh, pretty badass too. I wish a company would just start making them. You got construction zones, so ombres were starting to become more popular. And you get the Isuzu Pup, Freaks of Nature. There was a really badass Isuzu Pup at Eastbound Get Down, EBGD. And uh, if you haven't checked out our social media on Facebook, Instagram, check out our reels. I did one. It kind of was neat how inside the bed he did almost like a something you'd see where, you know, on a boat inside the bed where you stick the stuff on there. There's a pattern. It was pretty awesome. Uh, this is Tim Williams. And I did not know Tim before Daryl Poe had introduced us, basically. And uh, we, we got the audio done. And that was a really cool episode. That might be as close to court or to Jody Hall that we ever get, uh, just knowing Jody's you know kind of bad health, if you will. But uh, Tim work there. If you haven't listened to that episode, you can do so here on YouTube or search OLP Dragon Body. So we talked about how low this thing really was, uh, a daily driven terror. So badass. You can see the door handle shave. Just got the keyhole there. But uh, we talk about that truck. We do, when I have guests on, we do try to also hit on, you know, whatever happened to them, to the truck. And that one, you know, is apparently still around. 
you could see here, still around the holidays, trying to get people to subscribe. That was an important thing. So you got to mini market. If you guys like what we're doing here, again, leave a comment. It helps us out. For some of you guys that continue to leave comments, thank you. Uh, I have been coming in a couple times a week to respond. We are nearing in on issue 100. Of course, we've got 269, so we got a good bit to go. So this is the freshman. Again, I did see this. This guy lived in Mississippi. I recall <clears throat> passing this thing uh, when it was on a trailer going to Showfest 2000. I don't know how I remember that. And, of course, I do have a couple of photos that I've shared in the past. Uh, this thing, I don't think, gets the credit it's due. It's super clean. Something a little bit different was it did have the tonneau cover, but, you know, d d definitely different. When you open this, you get to see, you know, easy to put fuel in it. They have another insert shot here uh, in a minute where you can see where the tank's at. Guys, we're kind of doing some of this, but, I mean, you know, t t to this level, all painted and stuff. Thing was super super clean you can see right here what i'm talking about color matched tank you'd see some of it but not a lot but again just not an over-the-top build but i mean arguably one that was deserving of a cover i mean just a super clean truck did you guys know this guy did you ever see this truck i don't know what happened to it i get the vibe there was another truck which i was going to grab the issue but i didn't have time this evening there's another truck that was built that arguably to me is one of the baddest Ford Rangers ever built and it doesn't get the credit. It's a similar, it's not the same. It's a similar color to this one, but I'll go over that one in the future. That was on the cover of Sport Truck and a cover of another really obscure magazine. But regardless, you know, kind of getting sidetracked there. Dude, shout out to that guy, man. He built a badass truck. And just to jump back here really quick, that was Rod, Roddy. I think I said, maybe I said Robbie earlier, but it's Roddy, R-O-D-D-Y, Odom of uh, Meridian, Mississippi. Photography, I did want to point out, Lance and Mike uh, shot that. Again, this is number three of uh, six to have Nietzsche wheels on the, quote, cover truck. So wanted to call that out again. A Tale of Tales, so body mods. And um, I do want to point this out because I love Mazda trucks. Of course, uh, really a timeless one, but check out what they did. Basically a roll pan and you got the S10 taillights. I still have the original S10 taillights for my truck. Mine are, of course, shaved. Uh, I try to keep some of that stuff, but sometimes I wonder why. But uh, you got an EAI. We've seen some of those ads. That's a full page ad. That wouldn't have been cheap at that time. And then, boom, compiled by Melissa Combs, you have the worldwide directory. So this, again, if you look back, this one doesn't have a ton of features in this issue. It had the shop tour of the dismantlers. You basically have the clubs, and, you know, that would have, you know, taken up some space. And that kind of gave them a little bit of breathing room for that issue, right, to be able to maybe get it together a little easier. Um, you know, doing a monthly publication can't be easy. Here you see, uh, this was a, 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 one of my favorite KMC wheels. Uh, my buddy Russ at the time, back in the day, he had the Stealths. And KMC did a lot of advertising with that moniker like no other for many, many years. Uh, we'll be talking about more of KMC when we have Steve Platt on, who had the steel frame truck. Here you can see, again, Alter Images, the Pro Hopper ad featuring the totally polished for ranger and again continuing and this would have been good in the era i mean street source was popping off but that was you know believe it or not still a thing to to kind of do the club directory here you can see mini truck and movie rental of the month a night at the roxbury some couple more things you could see top five things to do while in las vegas looks like bioli's yeah bioli's body works right there on the tag what's in the cd changer no Limit Top Dog after Snoop left Death Row. And that looks like Phil Fowler. Shout out to the big homie. Get to your merchandise we've seen. Here is Kyla, Carlisle 99 All Truck Nats. So let's take a look at some of the show coverage. That was a popular thing to do. Especially if it's super hot, super clean. Uh, Tacoma lifted there. 
Look at that, a vet on an S10 rear end, or an S10 truck. Super clean here, check it out. And, oops, bunch of trucks. I think that was Jody Hall's. I always get those mixed up. You can see some of the mags right here. Ah, to have that magazine rack with all those issues, boom. Some fire we could see right here is the trucking issue with Game Over, Clint Petrie's. Um, and we tagged the model as well. She's still on Instagram doing crazy stuff. Tylene Buck is her name, I believe. Here you can see a cab visor looking dope. Nice color. And uh, some dope, dope rides. Again, if you like what we're doing, continue to watch all the way through. It helps us out. We're nearing in on that mark that we need to, to jump over to monetization. And again, I know some people would go, well, why do you care? And it's like, hey, we're doing all this work. People are making money off of all the work we do. Why not make up a, a couple pennies a month for doing these long flip throughs? It'll also motivate me. I've got some editing I got to do on uh, ODB's corner. I think you guys are going to like where I'm going here in the next, I don't know month or two. I've got some things lined up. I think you guys will appreciate it. Who remembers this? An 80 Chevy Love dipping. Dude, talk about some, there's some ideas right there that Mike could do on the, on the rain or on the Mazda. Extend it, crew cab it, dual axle, tandem willy. Do it all, Mike. These are some of my favorite trucks ever made. The Mitsubishi Mighty Back slash D50. I uh, passed one of these the other day on the road. I think I took a photo of it. It was just a regular truck, but uh, it was pretty cool. And then here you see the Mighty Max. Super clean. I'd rock it just like that. Uh, just stick with us. Subscribe if you haven't. I mean, I, I know some of you guys are probably going, man, you know, there's a lot to go through. But the cool thing is you can watch these at your own leisure. You can take screenshots as you need to, bump it up to 4K. Don't forget in the description of the video, I have all of the features listed. So here's Garden State Nationals. This is where the cover would have been taken. And it's one of those we saw the freshman, but just know that you know you don't see that photo outside of here. So the only truck I think on the cover for this issue that was featured was the freshman. We posted this the other day. Uh, people did recall that the, the kid was really young when he got that truck. And that uh, is mentioned in that feature. But um, posted that through social media. Thad Cunningham had given us, uh, let us scan some photos and we had one of those. Someone mentioned they saw it at this show, which was the sixth annual Golden State Nationals up in uh, New Jersey. They said it was in the woods, the woods of Jersey. So I was like, all right, cool. Uh, fast bags again, you'll continue to see that term for a while. And then you have graffiti. So we'll look here briefly. Drag by in the upper right corner. This was like a hodgepodge, like kind of before uh, Photoshop of just stuff from the scene. I was trying to remember what um, what truck this was with the purple chassis. Anybody remember? I feel like it'll come to me at some point, but can't think of it. And then, of course, you have the MIC. Check that out, man. Stuff's kind of gold now. It's kind of hard to find. And I was just uh, talking with Kirk from No Regrets, Florida. We hung out over the weekend on Saturday. He rolled with me to a video shoot. And uh, we were talking about, you know, some valves he had back in the day that he sold. And good times. Such an iconic photo to me, man. That tailgate just looking dope with the MIC and Bobby Billiard. So there you have it. That's issue 97 of Mini Trucker Magazine. Definitely appreciate you guys watching all the way through. A little bit quicker, again, because we saw some of the white pages in there. That helps to, to get through the content a little bit quicker. But, um, you know, went over the cover with you guys. And that would have been shot at Garden State Nats, presumably 99, right? So it would have been just several months before. And uh, we kind of talked about all the cover vehicles. Again, the Ford Ranger really gets the cover credit, in my opinion, for this issue because, boom, it's front and center. It's also featured there. So shout out to all of um, these guys and any ladies in the background. If you were on the cover or know anybody that was, 
comment, share it with them, let them know, check it out. We're still looking back at the old school stuff. Look at the bleached hair. That was big in those days. And uh, good times, y'all. I'm going to flash it right now. Subscribe if you haven't already. We out here. Peace.